Well, a couple of new major developments in the George Zimmerman murder case, which is scheduled to begin to go to trial in just three weeks. Defense attorneys releasing a series of photos from the night Trayvon Martin was killed, uh, along with some other photos. And this comes just days after the defense team asked a judge to allow information on Trayvon Martin's drug use to be admitted at trial. Joining me now from Florida, Mark O'Mara, Zimmerman's attorney. Mark, great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Good what, afternoon. Great to be here. What do you think is the most significant piece of evidence that you have unearthed and are now getting ready to submit? Well, Megan, as, we, as you know, we try not to focus on particular pieces of evidence, but what we've done and what we've had to do pursuant to our reciprocal discovery demand is to forward information that we have to the state so that we can use it at trial. So all of the information that we released over the past couple of weeks, particularly today, was information from Trayvon Martin's cell phone evidencing a more three-dimensional picture of who Trayvon Martin was. I know you believe and will argue that the way Trayvon Martin has been portrayed in the press is not accurate and you, you intend to use these pictures and we're going to go through a couple of them in text messages to prove that. Uh, a couple that come to mind from what, what you've sent. Uh, pictures of, it appears, a gun from his cell phone, a picture of a gun and a hand holding a gun. Do you believe the hand holding the gun belongs to Trayvon Martin in this picture? Well, a premise to all of that. This information is only going to become relevant according to how the state handles their case. If they focus on the five minutes that was the intersection of George Zimmerman and Trayvon Martin, then a lot of information about Trayvon Martin's past, George Zimmerman's past, may not be relevant. But if the state attempts to bring in evidence of Trayvon in a certain way or George in a certain way, then this information may become very relevant. Having said that, you know, I, I have to be hesitant to suggest my opinion of what the evidence is. That picture that you're referencing is a picture taken from his cell phone by whatever person was holding that cell phone looking at a gun in a hand. And I don't want to say more than that because that's up really for a jury to decide. Why is that relevant, you know, even arguably? Arguably it's relevant because if the issue of Trayvon Martin's propensity for violence becomes relevant, then I think the jury can consider the fact that he had several pictures of a gun and of course there's text messages that also talk about his attempts to purchase a gun, that that could be relevant uh, concerning a propensity for violence. I know that you also have pictures of um, a marijuana plant that come from his cell phone. You've got additional pictures of Mr. Zimmerman's injuries on the night in question. I want to ask you about all that, and I also want to ask you about these text messages, 20 pages of text messages from Trayvon's cell phone. If you would bear with me, we'll pick that up after the break. And we continue now with Mark O'Mara, George Zimmerman's attorney. Uh, Mark, it looks like you have a picture from Trayvon's cell phone that shows a marijuana plant. The text messages from the phone talk about weed and can we smoke one last time and a fair amount of references to pot. How is this relevant? Well, we know that there was pot in Trayvon Martin's system the night of the event, and we know that one of the state's experts has said that that level of um, THC in his system, while may not be enough to get you arrested for a DUI, could definitely have impact and make you impaired. And there's other state uh, studies that are out there that say that that level of aggression, particularly in young males. So I think it's relevant to show that he was on it that night and that he might have been a chronic user of it. The, uh, among the other evidence are pictures, new pictures of George Zimmerman's injuries, some of which we've seen, you know, versions of before, uh, of his head and, and uh, his bleeding in his nose and so on. Obviously, you're going to show that this man was under attack on the night in question, but I think it looks like you're also going to use some of these text messages from Trayvon's phone to, to show that he, he was a potentially violent guy who had some past violent episodes. What, what do the texts show in your view? Well, Trayvon was 17 years old and it seems that from the text messages that he involved himself in some street fighting. There are some text messages and you can read them as well as I can that talk about losing one round and going back and winning two other rounds or going back to get somebody because he hadn't gotten enough blood. You know, if we're talking about who Trayvon Martin was that night, if that becomes relevant according to how the state presents it, mm -hmm. then the idea that this is a person who's familiar with fighting, uh, familiar with getting on top of somebody and other text that was there, I think that's very relevant for a jury to look back and say, what did happen in that one minute or so that we don't have audio evidence for? we got uh, about 20 seconds to the break. How do you like your chances right now? Uh, he's innocent. 
He had acted in self-defense from day one. We've always considered that. And this evidence we've known was out there. It's good we have it before a jury, and he's going to be acquitted. Mark, thanks for coming on.